Are you looking to learn how to make a needle felted mushroom garden fairy house? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know and more. and welcome to today's video how to make a needle felted mushroom garden fairy home my name is Iceland and on this channel snowflake forest felting I share needle felting videos have needle felting tutorials and share product reviews from time to time so if you're new and this interests you please consider subscribing and if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel be sure and check the links in the description below this video or leave a comment I'd love to connect with you there all right, I'm gonna put my mushroom aside for a little while now, and I'm going to start on the base that the mushroom is going to sit into, like so. I like to start with the bone colored wool, and then I'm even going to give this a little bit of a mound towards one end, and that's where the mushroom will sit. Add some more wool here. And then as usual, you want to flip it. So you're felting it from all angles. It's gonna help you make it nice and firm. You're starting to get your piece pretty solid you can go ahead and start adding the green colors that you'd like to it go ahead and leave an open space around the base where the mushroom is going to be attached just start felting your color in you can see I have chosen to do a variation of colors it's gonna look pretty rough for this round but I'm gonna go ahead and mesh it up a little further along in this process I just want to get it covered in the greens all right once you have gotten your little grassy patch almost complete you can go ahead and set it aside and we're going to finish up our mushroom and you should go ahead and trim as much of the excess fibers off of it as possible get it looking really nice and complete all right so once you have finished trimming your mushroom all up it's time to decide which side you're gonna want to put the little door and window on. I know for my mushroom, I wanted the dots to go off to the one side, and then that is also the side where the cap is a little higher than the other side. The back side drops down a little bit more. You're gonna want your door color, and this is just gonna require a little tiny amount of wool. You're gonna wanna roll it really well together between your fingers, and then you can begin to trace your door on. like that and then if you want to give it somewhat of a wood grained look you can alternate your brown color in stripes and use the two colors to fill it in Like that you should have your little door and then make it a little doorknob with some black super simple roll the wool between your fingers into a little ball and put it on the right side like a little door handle make sure it is all felted super good here surround it if you need to all nice and smoothed out 
trim any excess fibers there may be. And now it's time for the windows. I'm gonna use the same color I used to outline the door. And then on each side of the door, slightly above it, I'm gonna make a little box. And then do the same on the other side. It really helps when you roll the wool really good prior to attaching it. You're gonna make your windows as even as possible on each side of the door. And get too close to it or too far away before you get it completely attached. Don't be afraid to pull it out and start over. You really do want these as even as possible. If you need to use your tape measure to do so, you can. Get mine out here. I'm gonna check the length of my window. Just a half inch. And there we are. Now, got a little spot that the brown is thin, so I'm gonna add a hint more there. Helps them look a little more even. And now, you're gonna need to create your little X or cross inside of your window. Again, roll the brown wool really thin. And now I'm just gonna go straight up and down the center and cut it off. And you can see it like that. And now I'm gonna come on each opposite side and fill the little line. Trim it like so, and then the same on the other. And then repeat that step on the other side. And then, same process still. Each window is framed and it's time to add the yellow glow as if a light is on inside. You need a really small amount of wool and then roll it between your fingers as well and then you're gonna fill in the spots in between the brown window frame. <laughs> Any extra fibers. And just like that, you have your first window done. Now it's time to do the other side. So repeat the same steps. And just like that, you've put a door and windows on your little mushroom home. So now it's time to take and add your mushroom to your little felted grassy patch. Since you have this extra wool, it's just gonna lay right on top. It's okay if you cover up your green some and just start attaching it really well. Next, you're gonna wanna even out your green patch some. So that's gonna require meshing of your green colors. Just rip it apart, back and forth between your fingers. Blend the colors together really well. Then you can start to take little bits and felt around the base of your mushroom. Just continue this until you're happy with your grassy green patch that your mushroom is attached to. Once you've felted your grassy patch, 
you can go ahead and set it aside and it is time to start working on the flowers i have planned a little sunflower i'm gonna do alternating colors between the yellows and the petals are kind of teardropped shape so you're going to want to get them laid out a little bit just rolling it between my hands like so Try to use even amounts on each one and then you're going to want to felt each of these and felt them into teardrop shapes. Be super careful to not felt your fingers here. Rolling it is going to help and then sometimes I even kind of like to felt down from the top like so. You can do that as well and it'll help make your one end a little more full. And roll them a little bit here and there to help the felting process go faster and then just continue this until you have each petal done all right once you have all of your petals made it's time to take some brown you're going to make the center of your sunflower and attach all the petals together. Just take your loose wool and start stabbing it in to the end of each petal. You want it on top. And do the same thing to the back side. afraid to grab some. The center of sunflowers are pretty wide. And then just continue felting this until all the petals are nice and secure. If you feel you want your sunflower fuller, don't be afraid to make more petals for it. Now it's time to make a stem for your sunflower. Grab your piece of wool and roll it between your hands really well and then start felting it. You're going to want to leave the end opened and you can even fray it out like we have on our other projects. So that end will go into the, to the grassy patch and this end will go into the top of the sunflower. Some more if you need to. You're going to want your stem really firm so it holds your flower well. And now you're going to want to trim your sunflower. I just finished trimming it up and I decided a true sunflower definitely needs more petals. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process and make a yellow one to go on each side of the more orange colored. And if you want your sunflower that full, you can do it too. Now you can start to see that's gonna look much better. sunflower should be starting to look like that. Next up we're going to make some leaves to add on to each side of the stem. So these are going to be flat and kind of pointed and you're going to want to leave a loose tip for the attachment. So I'm just going to hold the piece where I'll be attaching it. Creating a point at the tip and just keep flipping it back and forth until you have made a nice flat leaf. side and make your other one. Okay, 
right and now you can attach them to the side of the stem just like so use the same excess fiber on your other one to attach it as well them a little better from the back side than the front if you want them more forward just position them more forward in front of your petals if you want and give it a nice solid felt make sure that they're nice and firmly attached and then it is time to trim your flower again you're going to want to do this part very carefully since your petals are super close together I don't want to accidentally trim one off. You'll notice the mushroom has a handful more polka dots on the top of it. My son suggested that it needed some more, and I think that does look a lot nicer. And then once you're done trimming your flower, you can set it aside, and it's time to start working on your rose. These petals are going to be flat and round with a peak as well, kind of more like you're making a leaf and then you want to leave a pinch of it for attachment at the one end too. I'm also going to add some orange and rose color to my red roses. Make them kind of coral colored. A tiny bit of the rose on the edges. And then use a little bit of the orange at the point. one still needs a little trimming I'm gonna go ahead and set it aside and then just keep making these till you have a handful of them all right once you've got your petals made it's time to make the inside of the rose this is a little bit different you're gonna to want to start by shaping it like a rectangle because this is a piece that we're gonna roll to make it look like a bud on the inside so felt this piece nice and solid. I'm gonna flip it back and forth. And you're also gonna want one end a little more narrow than the other end. Alright, once you've got this piece nice and felted, it is time to do some more trimming. You want to give it a nice trim along with all of your petals. Right, go ahead and set those scenes aside and you're going to work on felting the little stem. Roll it between your hands and start felting it until it is nice and solid. Leave a little piece at each end for the attaching. if you continuously roll it to keep it nice and round. Alright, and now go ahead and attach it to the inside of your rose at the more narrow tip. And then you're going to want to roll your rose like so and then felt it around the base of the stem to keep it nice and rolled and then you want to start to add your petals Too many extra 
extra fibers that may need to come off. And just like that, you have a little rose. Now you're going to want to finish working on your door for your mushroom. So you're going to need a little bit more brown again. And you're going to want to make the door go all the way down to where it goes into the green. Again, roll the wool between your fingers. And then just continue the line where you left off. And then if you need to add a little bit more grass to meet the door as well, add that on in. I'm gonna need a little bit more black to make the doorknob a little bigger now. So if you need to do the same. And your mushroom should be starting to look like this. Now it's time to attach the flowers. So you're gonna to wanna to fray the bases out. It's attached. A nice big old sunflower in the front yard. And really I want the rose back here off the side. Just like that right outside the window and now this rainbow piece that I was showing you earlier I'm gonna trim it up and make it into a little path I'm gonna make each color individual and then just start felting them on And just like that, you have a little felted mushroom fairy house. So super cute. But you see it here, a little 360. That's it. That's everything you need to know to make a needle felted mushroom garden fairy home. If you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. And if there's something you think I should felt next, go ahead and drop it down in the comments below. I might just make it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!